go back because Frank, you have a you know what a very rare achievement, which is that all of this conversation is happening in the shadow of your work and your thinking. And the end of history is an often misquoted, misremembered book. Can you refresh us on what you were actually arguing that? Because it's the end of history with a capital H, right, uh -huh, which is very uh -huh. important. But what was the central thesis of that book? Yes, well, let's see if I can think of that <laughs> argument. Uh, I, I usually get asked it once or twice a day for the last 30 years. So That is the price I've of success, of, I'm afraid. Yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of practice. Well, uh, first of all, I would... I would explain what the end of history, those words mean. So history is history with a capital H. Today we would call it something like modernization or development. Uh, that is to say the slow evolution of human social organization over the millennia. As you go from hunter-gatherer societies to tribal societies to, I don't know, feudalism to you know, an industrial society and then wherever we are uh, today. Uh, that's history. And then the end is not a stopping, it is the direction that that progress is uh, pointing us towards. And um, there was a, well, Karl Marx had a, you know, he bought into the idea that there was history in this progressive sense, and he also talked about an end of history. For him, the end of history would be communism, because that was the highest form of human uh, organization that resolved all of the contradictions of prior uh, forms. And my observation back in 1989 was we weren't going to get there. We weren't going to get to this higher stage that we could get to liberal democracy connected to a market economy, but it wasn't clear that there was another stage in social evolution higher than that, better than that, and that that's you know, where we would uh, end up. Uh, I did not predict that everybody would end up being a peaceful you know, democracy, but I said that there is this larger process, you know, call it modernization, that is valuable. You know, people don't want to live in poor, chaotic, less developed countries. They want to live in you know, Switzerland or Canada or you know, Britain uh, that uh, has a high level of wealth where you can uh, uh, you can educate your children, you don't have to worry about your physical security the way you do in many uh, poor societies, and you know, that's really what the meaning of the end of history was. Which then leads me on to the question of why didn't that happen to Russia after the end of the Cold War? Why didn't it become a liberal democracy? Well, I do think that there are uh, you know, cultural traditions that can get in the way. I mean, so many factors. Uh, one of them was uh, just bad policy. And I really do think that a lot of the, especially the American economic advisors that were uh, talking to uh, <coughs> Russian policymakers after the Soviet Union fell apart gave them bad advice. They made a much too rapid transition to a market economy. They didn't have the, and it was based on a really fundamental misunderstanding. They didn't understand you need a state in order to have a market economy. Yeah a functioning state and the, mm -hmm. you know, the Soviet Union had just dismantled its state. And so that was part of it. I think that you know, just the shock of losing an empire that rapidly uh, was deeply traumatizing to a lot of people. It uh, shouldn't have been because I, I, I believe there's a country in this neighborhood that lost an empire at some point in the not too distant past and it didn't go into this big revanchist you know, effort to reconquer lost territories, but I do think that there is a tradition in Russian national identity that understood its own identity in terms of the domination of its region, and that simply just didn't go away. Uh, and then, you know, I think uh, part of it is just the luck of particular leaders, and I think we've got a lunatic running this country right now who is just fixated on that, what he regards as a historical uh, injustice, but you could have imagined other outcomes. You know, Boris Yeltsin could have appointed somebody other than, you know, a KGB agent to be the next president of Russia, and we may have been on a very different path. There's a great error, actually, an extremely dangerous error being unfolding at the moment, which is to say that um, Putin is mad. Now, he may, be solid, he may be isolated. He shows many of the characteristics of isolation. 
there may be people not telling him the bad news. That might be why he'll see scapegoats for the failure. He'll, he'll sack a lot of his people. He already has military and, and intelligence. But when one says that, one is making the, the, the classic error of liberals, which is to say that underneath all human beings are rational in the sense that liberals understand rationality. What they really want is freedom, peace, prosperity, or as I think Wolfowitz said about Iraq, he said, two years from now, they'll all be sitting reading the Wall Street Journal and checking their stock prices. <laughs> Didn't happen. Um, and not only because of American um, um, mis mistakes. Uh, this can lead to ca catastrophe because it leaves out the possibility of that uh, um, a ruler like Putin with goals, uh, goals about reviving uh, Russia in its czarist or, or perhaps its Soviet form, uh, unifying it, uh, having it as not being as a, a kind of a world historical uh, a force in the world, um, um, in, in, in human affairs. There is goals, and we leave out the possibility, which has been many times exhibited in history, that people will put as human beings, leaders, and even some of their followers, will put away, put on one side these liberal goals, but apply um, 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 some other goals instead. I think he is rational. He's been preparing this for a long time. Um, he's um, turned the economy into a fortress. It's in, people say it's in free fall now. Well, they can probably still feed themselves because 80% of their food is domestically produced. Um, it'll be other parts of the world, the developing world, that face shortages and, 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 and hunger. 